Hi, this is Dr. Cindy Woody, and I have a quick video for those of you who are wondering what to do if you did not pass your PASSL exam on your first attempt. So the question I get is, should I resubmit my PASSL task? Okay, so uh, should I resubmit? If so, which task? So remember, a resubmission doesn't mean that you're going to redo all of your tasks. You can choose which ones you want to resubmit. How do I improve and how long do I have to do this? So let's take a look at a couple of examples of people's scores. These aren't actual scores, but they're based on actual scores. So let's look at candidate number one. So candidate number one, of course, you know you need 42 points to pass. That's in Texas right now. And as I'm making this video, it's May 2022. So I guess that's always subject to change. But 64 points possible on the passel scoring. And candidate number one has earned 22 points out of the possible 64. So it sounds terrible, right? 34.3% sounds like a lost cause. No way this person should not resubmit. Well, I want to take a look at this and see. So there's, there's two um, possible routes this person may go. So let's look at, obviously, task two. I want to look at that one first. So on task two, the person did great. Three out of four, three out of four, three out of four, three out of four. Three out of four for a total of 12 out of 16, which is a very solid score, I would not resubmit task two. Task one and task three are not good. So task one, the person earned two out of 16 points, and on task three, eight out of 32 points. And be sure and notice that task three is the one that has the video, it's more complex, it gets double points. So even though the points add up to 16, they double the score that you get for task three, so it's worth 32. So the person really only earned four points, but because they doubled it, they gave them eight out of 32. So on task one and task three, I see some scores of zero. Do you see that? So on step one, zero out of four. Step two, zero out of four. Step three, zero out of four. And again, over here, here's a zero, and here's a zero on step three. So if this person, if candidate one truly did not really do task one and task three in the field, then I would say do not resubmit. You cannot replicate those tasks, start from scratch, and completely redo all of them in two weeks. There's just not enough time for that, and that's typically the window that you'll have for resubmission. So let's say you were going to try to fake it on task one and task three, and you just turn some stuff in, like, oh, maybe they'll score me high and have pity on me, and I'll pass. No, no. So you just need to wait, and you need to do that next semester when PASL is offered over again. However, typically when a person earns a zero, it's not because they did a bad job. It's because they missed some technical part of it. Either they did not understand the directions and then did not follow them, or they, they didn't attach their um, artifacts. So one thing that might get you a zero is, let's say you turned in a video of... Uh, you and your students in a classroom. So you didn't understand the directions, you got a zero, we don't allow students in videos. There's lots of things wrong with that. So you would get a zero for that video. But let's say that you really actually did do task one or you really did do task three, you just turned in the wrong video or more likely, you didn't attach your artifacts. So we see like on task one, they got some points on step four, they made a two out of four on task step four on task one, that tells me that they do know how to attach artifacts and they do know how to do the writing. Clearly on task two, they demonstrated good written commentary because they scored a three. But on this, these three steps, I suspect they didn't attach their artifacts. Either that or they attached artifacts that didn't follow the directions. So it's up to you to decide. Did you understand what you were supposed to do on task one? and you understood it, you did it, you just either didn't describe it very well or you failed to check your links to make sure your artifacts attached, or did you not do it? Because if you didn't do it, you need to wait and do it over again this fall. And the same for task three. So this one is borderline. You kind of like need to know yourself, I guess, and what you did on that one. On task, on candidate two, it's a little bit easier to see. I definitely think candidate two should resubmit for several reasons. First of all, they earned a 34 out of 64, which is a 53. They only needed, you know, like what, eight more points to pass. 
And you could get eight points in several places here. So on task one, they have a 2.5 out of 4 on a couple of the indicators right here and right here. So with a 2.5 out of 4, what that means is two graders scored it. One scored it as a 2 and one scored it as a 3. So you were close, right? If the both graders had scored those as a 3, that would have been two more points, right? And again, over here, we have a 2.5, so that would have been uh, another point. And then here on the commentaries, I would suspect on task 3, really across the board, I see lots of twos on the commentary. So when you read in the handbook and it explains how to earn a two and on the rubrics, how to earn a two versus how to earn a three, typically the difference in a two and a three is the descriptive writing on the two just lies flat. They just say things like students were successful, you know, we saw a lot of progress, whereas in this task three, not task three, level three writing that will earn you a score of a three or a score of a four, you'll see a lot of description and analysis and rationale for why they did these things. So there's a video I've made called Written Commentary, uh, how to maybe how to write good written commentary or something. That one explains the difference in the three types of writing. And the overall comment I would have for person candidate number two is yes, resubmit. Make sure that you have something good when you resubmit, but it's probably your written commentary that's holding you back. Okay, let's see the next thing. So sometimes they'll say, I still don't know, you know, which task I should do. This is straight from the PASL website. I love these links. I'm not going to click on them for you right now. You can go to the website and find these. If you just Google PASL resubmit, it has this great page. Each one of these links has specific guidance for each of the three tasks and which um, each of the four steps on the three tasks and how the scores are assigned. So if you're trying to bump yourself up from a two to a three, that's where your growth area is. A two to a four would be phenomenal, right? With from moving from a two to a four, you definitely wouldn't have it. But I love this little girl here swinging for that pinata with her eyes closed. You don't have to go blindfolded, right? You've got some feedback now, so you know what you're doing. And then how to improve. I want you to think about these kids that are waiting on you and the schools that really need you to get there and get this certification. And also, like maybe your grandma or somebody in your corner that believes in you. These are the things that you need to do to improve PASS. And this is, again, straight from the PASL ETS website. I've linked it below. Um, so the first thing is make sure that you're reading and responding to the questions accurately. So you really have to dissect the parts of the question and then make sure if they're being asked to describe or to discuss or to, you know, to give an example. When you link your artifacts, make sure, I guess we'll get to that on number three. I, I'll do two first. Answer everything they ask. So if they ask you to supply, supply evidence of something or they've asked you to um, describe something, make sure you're really reading every single thing in the prompt. So it, may, it says it may seem simple, but the test takers who don't do well fail to provide a complete response. So you could definitely bring your score up higher um, by making a more complete response. And then another one is to provide the all required artifacts. So definitely a zero if the artifacts aren't there. Um, be sure to read what they're asking for in the artifacts and make sure that you're not providing weak artifacts. Strong, you want strong ones. And remember, you can, you should provide new things. Like you're not just going, you're not required to turn in the same things you turned in last time. You're not asking them to just look at it and score it again. There is actually something you can do called rescoring, which is $100 instead of 75 and that really just tells them to look again. I definitely think that you're ahead to do the resubmit because resubmit allows you to put in new things. And then the last thing is make sure you're thorough and detailed and it says review the analytical portion of each rubric. That's typically where you can gain some uh, points through your analysis. So here are the deadlines. Uh, I apologize when I did my design helper here on my PowerPoint. It put fall 22 down here. But this is spring 22, that's where I am right now making this video. They're due on May 31st if you're resubmitting. Um, if you're gonna wait and do this fall, you can actually, the registration window opens in July and you can submit all the way up till just after Thanksgiving break and your scores will be back at the end of Christmas break, looks like December 29th. And that's when the resubmission window opens if you're not um, successful on that one. Remember resubmitting allows you to look as if you passed it on the first attempt. 
So um, there's definitely an advantage there. And also to resubmit is $75 per task. So if you can do the math, 75 times three is $225 to retake the whole test versus waiting until the fall or the spring, depends on when you're watching this video. The whole test is $375 when you sign up for it the first time. Resubmitting a task is $75 per task. And like the candidate we were showing earlier was not gonna resubmit task two, it's just $150. If you're only gonna resubmit one task, it's only $75. So it's definitely, um, in the long run, it's a good financial investment if you aren't starting over from scratch. It's just, especially in May, I don't know how in the world you could possibly do these tasks from scratch if you haven't done them to start with. And then uh, one man reached out to me and he was really discouraged. And I said, you know, remember the story of Rich Strike and this year's Kentucky Derby. Rich Strike was a horse at the very back of the pack, a last minute addition. He was so far back, nobody even saw him on the radar. Like the whole pack was ahead of him. But he really put it on in the last minute of the race. This is, uh, I think this was at 53 seconds left in the race. This is courtesy of NBC. Um, Rich Strike put on everything he had. He gave it all his all and he came out and he won the Kentucky Derby. And so I feel like you can do this too. You can give it all you've got these next couple of weeks. Really make Passel uh, the the focus of everything that you're doing, the epicenter, I guess if you're going with that, so that you can pass this exam and you can go into that winter circle and celebrate passing your PASL. So best wishes to you. You've got this.